video, we want to understand what tympanic plexus are. Okay. So basically, you have seen in uh, middle year, right, in the anatomy when we studied, you saw this uh, tympanic plexus, right, TP. TP you have seen and you have understood what it is also hopefully. So basically, in the floor, right, in the middle year canal, you saw in the floor, right, in the middle year, in the floor, basically. So you saw that um, the glossopharyngeal nerve, what it does, it pierces. So if this is the box, so this is the floor, right. So the glossopharyngeal nerve, it pierces the floor between the jugular fossa and the lower opening of the carotid canal. It enters the tympanic cavity to take part in the formation of tympanic plexus. So which is the nerve? Glossopharyngeal nerve, which is the cranial nerve. 9, right? How do you write 9? 1 and X, correct? That's how you write 9. So it is cranial nerve 9, glossopharyngeal nerve. It pierces the floor between the jugular fossa and lower opening of the carotid canal, right? It enters the tympanic cavity and takes part in the formation of tympanic plexus. So what are tympanic plexus? Let us read from the textbook now. It lies on promontory. It lies on what? It lies on the promontory. It is formed by number one, the tympanic branch of the glossopharyngeal nerve. And secondly, in this there is something extra. The sympathetic fibers okay, also are there. So what and all are there here? It has the tympanic branch of glossopharyngeal nerve, right? <clears throat> tympanic, what is tympanic? Tympanic branch of the glossopharyngeal nerve, okay? And it also has the sympathetic fibers, okay? So these form plexus around what? Around the internal carotid artery. The tympanic plexus is lies on the promontory. So some important points here lies on the promontory. Okay. What and all is there in this? There are two parts in this. The tympanic branch of the glossopharyngeal nerve and the sympathetic fibers. Then what else you should know here? So it is forming the plexus around the internal carotid artery. Tympanic plexus supplies innervation to the medial surface of the tympanic membrane. Kind of understandable actually. Now if you look at this diagram, what do you understand? So this is the tympanic membrane. You are looking at the medial surface because you have kind of opened the tympanic membrane. That is the lateral wall. You have opened it and you are looking at the medial surface of the tympanic membrane. So this tympanic plexus will supply the medial wall of the tympanic membrane. Isn't it? Is it clear? So basically here they are saying the tympanic plexus supplies innovation to the medial surface of the tympanic membrane. It also supplies the tympanic cavity, the mastoid air cells, the bony eustachian tube etc. Okay, so it is going to supply what and all? The tympanic cavity, the tympanic membrane medial surface, the mastoid air cells, right? The bony eustachian tube. Then it also carries secretomotor fibers for the parotid gland. So it also supplies the parotid gland. So what and all is it supplying? Medial surface of tympanic, ty, m panic, it's a panic, tympanic membrane. Then tympanic cavity, then the mastoid air cells and bony eustachian tube, right? And it also supplies the parotid gland. Secretor, secretomotor fibers for parotid gland. Secretomotor fibers for parotid gland. Okay. Then, section of the tympanic branch of the glossopharyngeal nerve can be carried out in the middle ear in case of Frey syndrome. So, if there is Frey syndrome, so the clinical importance is coming here. If there is a Frey syndrome, right, what is that now? What is Frey syndrome? See here this Frey syndrome. So, what is happening here? 
auriculo it is also called as aurico temporal syndrome the aurico temporal and the great auricular joint so the sensory and the secretory motor joint and then what will happen this person when the person is eating what will happen there will be sweating and flushing of a patch of skin near the ear right so that is frey's syndrome so in frey's syndrome if you want to do the section of tympanic branch of the glossopharyngeal nerve right so basically it can be carried out in the middle ear so in case this person has that problem in the middle ear they can section the tympanic branch of the glossopharyngeal nerve okay in the middle ear now look at some more details here course of the secreto motor fibers to the parotid so how are uh, the tympanic plexus are supplying the parotid right the secreto motor fibers are being supplied from the tympanic plexus to the parotid so the course they are explain here explaining here so inferior salivary nucleus you will get the glossopharyngeal nerve from that you will get the tympanic branch that will form the tympanic plexus till here you have understood right this much you already know because you have studied till now what tympanic plexus are for it a branch is the tympanic branch of the glossopharyngeal nerve that is cranial nerve 9 that much you know from this tympanic plexus lesser petrosal nerve aortic ganglion from their auricular temporal nerve parotid gland so let us understand this one now so glossopharyngeal nerve tympanic branch and somewhere you should see the less lesser petrosal nerve right so the aortic ganglion is here so the lesser petrosal nerve is here so now let us go in order that they have said glossopharyngeal nerve tympanic branch then you have the tympanic plexus lesser petrosal nerve then you have the aortic ganglion aortic ganglion here so lesser petrosal nerve aortic ganglion auricular temporal nerve and finally that will reach the parotid gland so what is actually this uh, nerve this is a secreto motor okay fibers to the parotid gland so from the glossopharyngeal to the tympanic plexus to the lesser petrosal nerve to the aortic ganglion to the parotid uh, auricular temporal nerve to the parotid gland so hope you have understood the tympanic plexus so basically they lie on the promontory they are uh, formed by the tympanic branch of the glossopharyngeal nerve and sympathetic fibers they are forming plexus around the internal carotid artery the tympanic plexus supplies the uh, medial surface of the tympanic membrane the tympanic cavity the mastoid air cells the bony eustachian tube okay and it also supplies the secretory motor fibers for parotid gland in case of frey's syndrome the section of the tympanic branch of the glossopharyngeal nerve can be carried out in the middle ear okay then uh, course also we have explained to the parotid how it reaches okay so that's all for now in tympanic plexus bye bye